In our first movie on plugins, we assigned plugins to individual tracks so as to apply real-time effects to those tracks and those tracks only. That's good if you want to enhance the sound of a particular track, but what if you want to enhance the sound of a group of tracks in more or less the same way? Uh, you could bounce down those group of tracks into a single track and then apply an effect to that track, but that would actually be uh, long and cumbersome and really unnecessary. Pro Tools allows you to create effect sends, which will let you process multiple tracks to, with a single effect, much like you would see in a real recording studio with sends out going to a device and then coming back into the board. So what we're going to do is we have the drum set um, tracks here, and we're going to process them with some reverb. And we'll create a single reverb um, instance, but we'll use different send amounts to tweak how the reverb will be applied to the entire set. So I've got my drum set soloed here. Let's take a listen. And now I'm going to go through the process of setting up a send. Okay, first I need to make sure that I can see the sends by clicking the icon down at the bottom left and making sure sends A through E are selected. They will be this lighter colored row right below the inserts. Now I'll create an aux track. And I'm going to create a stereo aux track because I'm using ambient effects. That's a personal preference. Uh, when I'm using ambient effects such as stereo or maybe a multi-tap delay um, or reverb or multi-tap delay rather, I like to use it in stereo and for dynamics um, like compression, limiting, etc. I like to use a mono um, aux input but it's personal preference and um, sometimes it's limited by the software. Uh, certain plugins won't appear on these kinds of tracks. So I'll choose create and I'll drag it over so it's right next to my group and rename it. So drum send. And I'll go ahead and recolor it because I like for it to be a similar color to the group. My group is purple, so I'll choose this blue here, or this dark blue. All right, now we're going to deal with the input to the send track in a minute. Let's choose to affect the snare. So there are two snare tracks. There's the trebly snare track and the more um, mid-rangey snare track. And before, we applied the plugin straight to the track by going to insert, plugin, and etc. This time, we're going to use the send, and we're going to click the send, and we'll send out to bus 17 and 18. Using my right mouse button, I'll right click that and choose rename and send to drum send and this is a virtual audio bus within the computer that we're going to send out of now immediately I'll go to the drum send uh, track and choose input bus drum send now the output for the drum send I'm going to send to the drum submix group so that is drum X here at the top and a critical point here in order for us to hear these effects right now we have the entire drum kit soloed, but notice how the drum send is not soloed. I could either solo safe it, or I could solo it. Um, the advantage of solo safing is that it's always exempt from solo. The advantage of using solo is that sometimes I can just solo that track, especially if I'm using pre-fader, um, which we'll get to in a minute. I'm going to solo safe it by option, or rather command clicking the solo button. Okay, when we clicked the drum send here, a small interface came up that had a fader and a pan knob. This interface is like a brand new fader and pan knob for this track. And as it happens right now, adjustments we make that to this fader will jump from the drum send out to the drum send aux. So it's a bit like running a track in parallel. Um, so let's go ahead and create on the drum send track. This is where we're going to create all of our effects. Let's create now some reverb. And we'll tweak it to make 0 dB coming in. So nothing changed. And 
we'll let the mix stay at 100% so we can really hear the difference. Now we should hear the snare with some reverb. Remember that we need to attenuate the fader for the send, and as we attenuate it up, you can hear the reverb for the drum. If I um, command click the up and down arrow, I get this minified version of this um, send knob and fader. So that's kind of helpful. And then if you click on the small letter A, you can get different sends. Okay, so attenuating or, or adjusting rather the fader will uh, adjust the amount of drum going into the send track. But what I want you to notice is I'm going to go ahead and pump the snare way up on the send so we can really hear the reverb. As I turn down this track, oops, let's try that again. Let's take it off drums now. I've totally gotten rid of the snare. So this is an example of a track being, or a send rather, being in post fader. That is, the adjustments after the final fader on the track will determine the final level of the send. So no matter what we adjust here on the send, the master fader for the track adjusts the level. If we don't want that to happen, we can do what's called pre-fader. And there's a small button here that says pre. And if we click that, then we are essentially doing a true parallel um, circuit for this track. That is, we can adjust the affected uh, drum snare, that's the drum snare going into the drum send, by itself, independent of the fader on the track. So watch. So now as I take out the snare top, you'll only hear the reverb. Okay, so that's pre-fader, essentially freeing up the send fader and the track fader. And I tend to prefer pre-fader for this type of effects usage. So now, if we want to send different um, tracks to the send, we'll do the following. Let's say we want to send the toms. Or here, how about the hi-hat? That has a bit better level. So here, we'll choose bus and drum send. Now we'll click the send to make sure we've got the right fader. It says hi-hat. Notice how the fader's all the way down. So we'll hit play. Now adjust into. You should, you should hear the, the hi-hat really opens up because now it's, it's being um, placed in stereo because our effect is stereo in the drum send track. And if we want to, we can leave this post fader. So that means as we adjust the main fader for the track, it adjusts the entire hi-hat sound. Or we can choose pre-fader, and as we adjust the main fader, the send is unaffected. So the process again for creating an aux track uh, to use with sends and, and effects is to first create an aux track, so either mono or stereo. Next, create an effects send by making sure that the send is enabled, so you can see it. So choose sends A through E or F through J. Then assign a track to a send. So we can choose Tom 3, for instance, and we'll choose to send out to drum send. Make sure that your aux track, that is your effects track, takes the input for the send. So bus is taking in drum send. And I've set the output to the um, 
drum submix group. You could really send it wherever you want. Here it's wise because I am dealing with submix stems. Then attenuate the send amount um, to get the desired result. So here, send out bus drum send. My fader's down. Option click it to bring it up. And then I'll play it and listen to it. And that's it. So what we'll be looking at in some future movies is how to automate the effects um, anywhere, either in a send track or an individual track. So that way we can have great control over our effects. And what's really great about sending out to an aux track here is that we can actually attenuate um, or lower the entire level for the effects with this main fader here on the send track. So it's, it, it allows us a great amount of flexibility for working with effects.